Understanding Complete Blood Counts by Samantha Rosen and Laura Stokes. Hello, I'm Laura Stokes. And I'm Samantha Rosen, and we are nurses on the Pediatric Oncology Unit at Boston Children's Hospital. In our practice, we have found that newly diagnosed patients and families require a lot of teaching regarding their diagnosis and treatment. And oftentimes, written information is not as effective when it's used in combination with other teaching tools. In order to streamline information about one of the most important topics that we discuss with our patients and families, which is understanding a complete blood cell count, we have created a visual tool to help teach this information. This educational tool in the form of a flipbook allows patients and their families to view pictures on one side while the healthcare provider follows a standardized script on the reverse side. On our unit, we found it to be extremely helpful as it opens up discussion with the family where they can present their questions while looking at a visual diagram. Today, we would like to share our teaching tool with you. Complete blood count. We begin our teaching tool with talking about a complete blood count. A CBC, or a complete blood count, is a lab test that shows the type and number of cells in the blood. CBCs are checked frequently during cancer treatment. It tells us about three different types of cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. These cells are all made in the hollow cavity of the bone called the bone marrow. The first type of cell that we talk about are the red blood cells. These carry oxygen through the body and give us energy. There are two lab tests that measure the number and function of red blood cells, the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. Hemoglobin represents how well the red blood cells are functioning by measuring the concentration of oxygen while within the cell. The normal value for that is 11 to 14. The hematocrit represents the percentage of red blood cells in the blood. The normal value for that is 31 to 43. When these values are low, it's called anemia. Signs of anemia are fatigue, shortness of breath, a fast heart rate, headache, and pallor. The next type of cell we're gonna talk about are platelets. Platelets help our body to stop bleeding by forming clots. A normal platelet count is between 150,000 to 450,000. When the platelet count is low, it's called thrombocytopenia. At this time, there is an increased risk for bleeding, which may result in bruising, bleeding such as a bloody nose, oozing of the gums, or blood in the urine or stool and small purple dots that can be found scattered on the body called petechiae. Don't use any medications that contain aspirin or ibuprofen as they cause the blood to be thinner and make the platelets less effective. The next type that we talk about are the white blood cells. These play an important role in the immune system by helping the body to fight infections. A normal range of white blood cells is 5,000 to 10,000. When they're low, the risk for infection is at its highest. There are several types of white blood cells. The neutrophils and bands fight bacterial infections. Those are the most important types. The monocytes destroy and remove bacteria. They are baby neutrophils. The basophils and eosinophils respond during allergic reactions. Lymphocytes also help to destroy bacteria and viruses by either killing them directly or by producing antibodies, depending on the type of lymphocyte. Bone marrow suppression. So next we're going to talk about how all of these um, cells are affected by bone marrow suppression or the decreased production of these healthy cells from the bone marrow, which is caused by many types of the chemotherapy and radiation that your child will receive. Another term for this is called myelosuppression. It usually occurs about one to two weeks after treatment. The nadir is the lowest level of the blood counts after chemotherapy. So a term that you'll hear a lot is ANC, which stands for absolute neutrophil count. It measures the number of circulating neutrophils, which helps us to know when you're neutropenic. The term neutropenic means that your absolute neutrophil count, your ANC, is less than 500, and this is the time when you're at the highest risk for infection. The ANC also helps us to determine when chemotherapy can be given and when the immune system is weakened the most. At this point in our presentation, we like to discuss with patients and families the specific lab printouts that we have here in our hospital. We review the way the white blood cells, the hemoglobin, the platelets, the hematocrit, and the ANC appears on our printout. Chemotherapy cycle. Here we talk about a typical cycle. 
Chemotherapy is given when blood counts are high. Counts slowly begin to drop and hit the nadir about one to two weeks after treatment. And as time goes on, the counts recover. Usually blood counts recover on their own, but sometimes blood or platelet transfusions are necessary. These will be done in the hospital or clinic. When blood counts are low, it is important to take extra precautions to prevent infection. Neutropenic precautions. Next, we're gonna talk about neutropenic precautions. Washing your hands is by far the number one best way to prevent infection. We suggest that you avoid large crowded areas such as malls or movie theaters and people who are actively sick. We ask that you wear a mask in public places only when your ANC is less than 500. If you get a cut on your skin, wash the area with soap and water and cover with a band-aid if necessary. In order to help decrease fatigue, try and take short rest periods between activities. Never use rectal thermometers or give any rectal medications as this is a huge increased risk for infection. And always remember to wear SPF at least 30 or higher as chemotherapy can make your skin much more sensitive. It's important to know when to call your health care provider. We ask that you seek medical attention anytime that your child has a fever greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit two times in 24 hours or greater than 101.3 degrees Fahrenheit one time. You will need to go to the clinic or emergency room because it is essential to give antibiotics for any fever during cancer therapy. The ultimate goal is to administer antibiotics within one hour from the initial fever. Don't use Tylenol during treatment unless told by a healthcare professional otherwise because it can hide a potential fever. We ask you never give Motrin or ibuprofen. If your child has a fever and is neutropenic, you will be admitted to the hospital until the counts recover and the fever improves. At this time in the presentation, we open it up to questions with the patients and families. We have found that this tool has been most effective in the discussion that it does prompt with patients. While reading through the slides, they're welcome to interrupt and ask any questions that they have at that particular time, but it truly gets them thinking about their own or their child's blood counts in a meaningful way. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. We hope that this tool may be helpful and effective in your care to pediatric oncology patients. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.